Once upon a time, many years ago, a young Maria was doing fieldwork in Salvagens Island, a Portuguese island in the Atlantic, which at the time had one house, one dog, no trees, and whichever researchers were there at the time. One of Maria's favorite hobbies was to snorkel in the bay in front of the only habitable house on the island. So there I was, snorkeling a little bit outside of the bay, when suddenly I saw what were maybe 10 to 15 triggerfish. Curious, I started swimming a bit closer, and I thought they would, you know, <laughs> act like fish. Either swim away, really not care about me, or even if they were curious, maybe come a bit closer, but, you know, always with some caution, like normal fish do. But no. These fish started swimming really fast just straight towards me all at once. And I was like, all right, I don't think that's normal. So I looked at the fish, I looked down, I couldn't see the bottom, it was pure blueness or blackness, I don't even remember anymore, but I just remember I couldn't see the seabed anymore. And I swam probably the fastest I've ever swam <laughs> back into the bay. Okay, I thought, you know, that's that. They didn't follow me, all is fine, at least I didn't see them. So let's continue snorkeling in the bay. And then I dived down to the bottom to look at something, like probably some sea cucumber or something. When, and I kid you not, when I'm swimming back up, I bump, I literally bump against one of the thousand <laughs> trigger fish that were following me. I bumped against this dude and I look back and they're probably again like 10, 15 of them staring at me in the face like with those goofy looking faces they have. Oh my god, I torpedo swam out of there and since that day on I never snorkeled in peace on that location again. So this was my first encounter with triggerfish and the story of how they ruined my hobby. My perhaps only hobby in an island where I had no internet, no phone connection, not many people to talk to and not much to do. So yeah, thank you triggerfish. It was personal. <laughs> it was very personal. <laughs> I, I dived again with several triggerfish but none of them as aggressive as these ones, or at least not as bold as these ones, until this September. This September, me and my partner, who I will from now on call V, were doing some diving holidays in Madeira. Madeira is an archipelago to which the islands I was previous at, that I just talked to you about, belongs to. These islands are located off the coast of Europe and Africa, and they have a very unique fauna because of that. Because they have influences from the Mediterranean Sea, from the north and west of Europe, and from Africa. We would be diving in the south part of the island, starting with a bay called the Pig Bay. We suited up, and after an 15 minute boat ride, we were diving in Pig Bay. The dive took us along a large rocky wall to our left that dropped to a sandy bottom. And there was a lot to see. We saw very interesting looking trumpet fish. I mean, they're always interesting looking. Very curious black tail combers, Macaronesian sharp nosed puffers, and Mediterranean parrotfish. We also saw Madeira and scorpion fish. They have venomous spines on their dorsal fins, which can cause serious complications to divers and swimmers if they touch them. We also saw canary damsels and a big school of barracudas. As you can see here, it was quite difficult to distinguish the barracudas from the ocean background. And, well, one reason was because I was using the wrong settings in my camera, so congratulations, Maria. But it's also because they are countershaded. Barracudas have darker colors on the top half of their bodies and lighter shades on their bellies, which camouflages them against both the ocean below and the surface above. It was a nice dive to start our holidays. Or was it? I noticed at the beginning of our dive that we were approached by a couple of triggerfish, but I, I kind of ignored it. I was like, you know, it had been so long ago that I had encountered them last. I had swum in the meanwhile with other triggerfish and nothing had happened. So I kind of ignored their presence. But at some point towards the end of our dive, I looked back at V and he was surrounded by many triggerfish and they were like kind of exhibiting aggressive behavior. They started by lounging at his camera and at some point really biting down on his fins. 
At that time, I really thought, you know, this is a great time to overcome my fear <laughs> and to just accept these goofy looking fish into my surroundings without fearing that they will, I don't know, attack me all at once and eat little pieces of me. And I don't know, I, that's why I don't watch horror movies. <laughs> there he was filming this, these guys. They were like kind of goofy looking, cute, you know, looking at his camera very close up, looking at him right here. And suddenly one of the trigger fish bit his hand <laughs> and we started chewing them from there on. It was nothing serious. He just had three little holes on his hand. It was bleeding a little bit, but despite being a bit aggressive, these fish are small and their teeth, despite being sharp, are also small. It was not a serious wound, but it was still pretty annoying, especially because then they continue trying to bite us all the time until the end of the dive. So it, it turns out that trigger fish are extremely territorial, especially when they are protecting their nests. And we were diving apparently in a nesting area during nesting season. Usually each male prepares dozens of nests in the sand and then the females investigate the nest and choose some of them to lay their eggs. When the female lays the eggs on the nest, the male is there to fertilize them. The, after that, usually the female stays close to the nest, protecting the nest, and the males patrol the area to, well, shoo away intruders, like us. <laughs> Triggerfish are one of the only types of fish that show this kind of parental care towards eggs. That is very interesting and it is quite ballsy of them to approach such big animals they've never seen before to just protect their nests. But if I see them again while diving, I'm still going to have my selfie stick prepared as a samurai sword to... Mm. That's what I was doing. That's what we were doing towards the end of the dive. Because at some point, these little guys <laughs> were trying to bite our guide's head. She didn't have a hoodie. So if they would bite our head, and maybe they even did, I don't know, we wouldn't notice it because we had a pretty thick suit with a hood, but she didn't and she couldn't see what was happening above her, right? So I opened the stick I had with my GoPro and I <laughs> was just <laughs> trying to stab them. You're not very fast in their water. So it was like slow-mo stabbing, but it worked for like half a second. It would shoo them away. They would come back again. But Anyway, it definitely made this dive a little bit more exciting. But yeah, beware of those trigger fish. They will not kill you. They will not injure you dramatically, but it's still good to be aware that they might bite. And at the end of the day, we are the ones intruding. We are the intruders there in their underwater territory and home. I have overcome my fear, I think. And I can now respect the great trigger fish for their efforts protecting their family. <laughs> All right, guys, that was it. <laughs> I wanna thank all my Patreons over on Patreon for making all this possible. If you wanna help my channel and contribute to videos like this and some exploration and getting better, better camera, you can consider donating to my Patreon. You can check it down below, or you can also check some of my affiliate links, maybe something there interests you. My merch store, you should see the, the clothes on below, but also the link is, uh, everything you know, is in the description box. And my children's book already working on the second one which will come out next year i'm super excited for it and yeah thank you all very much for watching i hope to see you in the next one bye